In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to integrate Adobe products into an Avid or an Apple workflow or pipeline. We have a lot of great tools such as XML, AAF, and OMF to allow you to get in and out of Adobe tools to help you get your work done more quickly. Let's take a look. All right, so as we take a look at my screen, you can see I've got Premiere Pro CS6 that's going on. Let's talk about Apple first. ProRes works. If you're on a PC or a Mac, ProRes all the way up to ProRes 4444 will work with QuickTime. All of the decoders are in the QuickTime player. And if you're on the Mac and you have Final Cut Pro or Compressor or Logic or any other product that contains the um, ProRes encoders, you can encode ProRes all day long within Premiere Pro or AME. Premiere Pro also supports XML import and export. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so inside of Premiere Pro, I earlier had edited a project in Final Cut Pro 7 and created an XML from that. So you can see I'm in a folder. Here's an FCP XML export of Timeline. Now our fidelity with XML is actually quite good. It's not just the basic cuts, but can involve a limited number of transitions. So now I just need to go ahead and point to the first a file here. So let's go ahead and find NOLA 26. And just like normal with Premiere Pro, once it links to the first file, you can see it's all there. So as we zoom in here, you can see all of those different assets have shown up. So I've got this timeline here, and you can see everything kind of came across. Now that's not to say that the fidelity is absolutely perfect, but let's talk about what we do have. We have all the markers because I happen to cut this particular timeline due to the music and I created markers inside of Final Cut Pro. All the markers came across. Cross dissolves come across. Markers in the clips come across. Now over here, I actually have a spot where I'm actually doing a picture in picture. So not only are you seeing the basic clips and cuts uh, showing up correctly in the timeline, but basic transformations such as position, scale, rotation, and opacity are also coming across. This is a great amount of fidelity so that you can move from Final Cut Pro into Adobe. Maybe you need to use AME to do your encoding. Maybe you want to do some titling work uh, inside of the Photoshop with Premiere Pro. There's all kinds of possibilities and potential workflows. So the next thing that I want to kind of look at is the idea of XML export. So once we're there, you can see that there's a lot of different opportunities here, and I'm just going to really talk to most of these. But once we're in, we believe in being able to go back out to different uh, exchange formats as well. So Final Cut Pro XML is supported as well, as well as Avid's AAF. And if we needed to send out this uh, mix as an OMF, or that's Open Media Framework, for, say, a Pro Tools session to sweeten the audio, you can do all of that. Now... Speaking of uh, Avid, we do support an import of AAF as well. I think I have one here on my desktop. You can see that that'll come across as well. I can import that. Sometimes it might come in with particular logs. And uh, it's asking me to point to my original piece of media. So let me just kind of go quickly there and point it to that file. Media types. And there it is, click open. And there is my simple Avid timeline. And zoom out there and you've got an Avid timeline there as well. Now, however, there are some caveats with Avid. For example, we do not support Avid's DNX HD in a native MXF. So if you want to work with Avid Media, you're going to have to wrap that uh, DNX HD media inside of a QuickTime. Once we get it there, we can work with it fine. So another neat thing that we talked about earlier was the idea that you can encode ProRes. So I have here a Mac, I have Final Cut Pro, I have Compressor on here, so I have access to the ProRes encoders. So I'm gonna go ahead and export my media or hit Command M. That brings up my dialog box. Let me stretch this out and make it a little bit more usable. Now you can see the, the option that show up is QuickTimes. There's a lot of different formats. If we wanna do ProRes though, we need to be in QuickTime. Now, I've gone ahead and created a custom ProRes preset. It's so easy to do. Let me show you how. I'll pick this one. But essentially, if you go down here to the video tab and open this up, 
If you have the encoders available in your system, they will show up here. You can pick that. At that point, then you want to go down and check to make sure you have the right frame rate, the aspect ratio, uh, whether you want interlaced or progressive frame orders, uh, what is the bit depth, and so on and so forth. The same thing also holds true for your audio codec. Do you want to use uncompressed wave, AIF, AAC, etc., etc.? Once you're done with that and you've created the exact preset that you need, you go up here and simply click Save name that preset, and now and forevermore, that'll show up inside of Premiere Pro as well as Adobe Media Encoder. So you're only going to have to create these presets one time, and from then on, you can just select them, and away you go. Don't forget that Adobe Media Encoder's batch processing, if you need to do a transcoded workflow, you can use that same ProRes preset to quickly and efficiently, in the background, process and convert all of your raw media into ProRes in the background. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to After Effects. And After Effects, I'm going to uh, show we've got some import uh, capabilities now. Uh, we recently entered into an agreement with Automatic Duck. And so if we go under File Import, you now see a new Pro Import After Effects. Now, the Pro Import After Effects is going to allow you to do much of the same thing that I just showed you with Final Cut Pro XML and AAF. So, for example, let's go to the desktop and we'll pick, say, that Avid AAF, open that up. And you can go ahead and click OK. And here's my comp, and you can see that same timeline shows up with the representative audio clips and the video clips with their handles. Everything is coming across as you would expect it to. So it's very powerful. The Pro Import AE is going to support you for XML, for AAF, as well as, uh, I believe, OMF. Now, one other thing that's worth noting inside of Adobe After Effects that a lot of users don't think about is the idea of Adobe Premiere Pro project. So there might be times where you need to two-step it. You're getting from an application into Premiere Pro and then from Premiere Pro into After Effects. This, again, opens up different opportunities and possibilities. We really always want to be establishing seamless workflows that allow the right tool for the right job. And that extra feature right there also gives you some additional capabilities. Finally, I'll just speak candidly about Adobe Audition. I'll just go ahead and launch that for you real quick. Audition also supports Final Cut Pro XML import and export, as well as obviously having pretty robust OMF. Audition is a great scalpel. It's a very quality precision tool for specific tasks. It can do great round tripping audio to video workflows, um, but a lot of times for a broader music production workflow or uh, some specific sweetening tasks, you might want to be sending that out to Pro Tools. So Audition supports OMF. Um, so we can go in here, we can open up a session uh, from here. Here we go. We can go ahead and import files as well as export. You can see Final Cut Pro, XML, as well as OMF. So we have three applications, Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, and Adobe Audition, all with a variety of different tools for working in and out of Adobe applications. So that no matter where you are with whatever tools you want to use, we're trying to work hard to give you access to the workflows and the tools that you need to get the job done. I hope you enjoyed this session of Adobe TV.